Well, glory to God. This is Pastor Steve Detweiler. Uh, it's something uh, uh, when you can uh, basically uh, end up having your service on the phone. I'm going to preach to you today what I have laid out, but the, the persons that, that normally show up ended up, let's just say we had a good ministry, phone call ministry, um, and we're going to move this in, into tomorrow. This is Resurrection Weekend. Um, this is the time that, 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 that the body of Christ uh, universally gets together and honors God for the great sacrifice He laid out for us. Amen? Laid out for us that we become one with Him in the shed blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God in the flesh, the, the Word made flesh, the Son of God, um, um, the Prince of Peace. He came and died so that we can live forever with Him. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for this word today. Father God, we, we thank you for this time that, that, that we get together as, as a body all around the world and, and, and just bring celebration to the victory over sin, death, hell, and the grave that, that you, sir, have given unto us life eternal in your shed blood sacrifice. This is a celebration. This is the resurrection coming up. We celebrate it tomorrow. We're preaching on the resurrection tomorrow. Praise God. We're preaching on the cross today. Hallelujah. And Father God, we thank you. We praise you for this time today in Jesus' name. Now, a lot of you know that sometimes I have trouble with titles. I've got three titles for this message today. One title is The Hope of the Cross. The next one is God So Loved the World. And the, the final title is He Gave All of Himself to You. And praise God, He did. He gave all of Himself to us. We're going to go with that one. Praise God. This is a real, and, and the Word of God says this is real love. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as the sacrifice to take away our sins. Amen. And that's 1 John 4.10. The sin that brought all evil upon us, all perversions, all the sickness and disease and plague and death is the root sin of all sins. And that sin is the sin of rebellion. Rebellion to the Lordship of God's Word. God raised Adam. God raised Adam. God walked with Adam. He taught Adam. He gave instruction to Adam. And, 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 and we know that, that at the time of, of, of Eve's deception and Adam's rebellion, God was not walking in the, in the garden with them because a little later on, God came into the garden and said, Adam, where are you? Of course, God knew where he was, but he needed to have some confession, amen? He needed to have some repentance, amen? He needed to have some truth, amen? Praise God, we need to come to God with some truth and repentance, amen? He already knows what's going on in our lives. We're not hiding anything from him, so it's, it's up to us to come, 1 John 1, 9, to come in and say, Lord, I repent of this. I am sorry, I see it's wrong. You convict me by your spirit, and I'm coming to you, and I'm asking you to forgive me. And his word says that he is faithful and just, to forgive you of whatever it is that you're coming to him with. But remember when that word repentance is in place, you're making the motivation to walk the other way. You're not motivated to walk the flesh anymore. You've come to God and now you're enlisting God's grace to give you his ability added to your life so that you can do that thing in your life that you couldn't do before and that is walk away from that particular sin amen well praise god and 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 and, and, and so what he did is god left his word with adam he taught him and then adam was teaching eve god's word god placed adam even in the garden gave adam the responsibility to 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 instruct and be the head of his household to instruct Eve, to, to give, in, give instruction as we see as we see as they were out of the Garden of Eden that he had to raise 
uh, Abel and Cain and then the other sons and daughters that they had and, and he, he had to be the leader of the head. Well, that's Ephesians. That's in Ephesians 5.23. The Apostle Paul was teaching this. Amen. But Adam was not leading as the head of his household. Amen. So we know in the Genesis account that Eve was deceived, but Adam was was not. Adam was enticed and drawn away by his own lust. Amen. And, and, and that word lust means like a forbidden longing. Well, it was a forbidden fruit. It was a forbidden tree. You don't eat from this. So we know in the heart of Adam, there was something going on. Amen. And what does James teach us about this? Remember, we're looking at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. James is teaching us about what happened in the beginning and how to to have that revelation so we don't walk down the road of Adam as he did in Genesis James 1 13 and through 15 let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust which means longing, longing for what is forbidden and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Now what we saw with Adam is that, that, that obviously when he had that opportunity, he heard the words of Satan saying, hey, you know what? He didn't, God didn't tell you the truth. If, if you let me tell you something about if you eat this you're not gonna die you're not go wait I'm gonna clarify something you must not have heard it right from God you must not have hey he must the, the translators must have just written it wrong amen and that's why and, 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 come on Adam I'm gonna tell you something about this if you eat that you're gonna be just like God knowing good and evil Amen. So, so, but however, Adam, Adam knew he walked with God and he knew he was made in the likeness in the image of God. But now he's seeing something. What did Adam do? He tried to take a shortcut. He tried to take a shortcut. What does man do ever since then? We try to take shortcuts. We don't take responsibility. We're, we're not accountable and we try to find the easiest way out. Amen. We try to find the quickest way to do something. We do it. We, we, we do it. We do it in, in, in a way that is not appropriate, does not have integrity. And, and this is what was set up to us through the first man, Adam. He 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 saw. Hey, I, I'm going to know something. God's keeping it. Well, you know what? What's that? What's that covetousness? He was coveting something that 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 that, that God he, he saw that he said you know what God told me I can't eat from that but but that has information that he, that that he's not letting me have but God has this information I want that information I want to know what God knows even though God was coming in and teaching he was raising a child but this child wanted to jump ahead way beyond his years of what he should have known. I'm sure at some point in his raising that God would have brought him to that point of saying, okay, now you're ready to handle and understand what evil is and how you stand in the good of who you are in me that I, and in that I can now not only cover you, I can become one with you by, the, by my Holy Spirit. I'm sure because this is the result of where we're at today in Jesus Christ and when he comes back we will be changed within a twinkling of an eye we will see ourselves just like him we now have the ability to be what at one with God with the indwelling of his Holy Spirit we are made vessels for the Spirit of God holy temples for the Spirit of God to be at witness with our spirit at one with our spirit this is the whole intent that was the intent back in Genesis and God has completed it through the cross amen Praise God. Praise God. But what happened? He was enticed and he longed for that forbidden thing. And when, when, when Satan gave him those words, he followed the words of Satan instead of following the word of God. There's your rebellion right there. Don't, don't be rebellious. Follow the word of God. Stop following the word of the world because the word of the world is the word of Satan. 
This is a word of deception. Stop going after forbidden fruit. If God says don't fornicate, don't fornicate. If God says don't adulterate, don't adulterate. If God says don't destroy your body with, with, with drugs and alcohol, because if you look at alcohol, you, you look at uh, porneo, pharmaceutical, fornication, pharmaceutical, all that stuff is in there when you research it, and you're looking at all those things that, 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 that the flesh longs for, and then what does it do? It brings death it brings destruction it brings killing stealing and destroying and that's the the that that's exactly who the thief is that's exactly what satan does and when adam rebelled against the word of god and took satan's word above god's word what happened what does james say the finished work of rebellion the finished work of sin brings forth death but guess what? Jesus says in John 10, 10, I came to bring you life, life more abundantly, life to the full, to the overflow. In other words, you get into me, the living word of God, the word made flesh, the son of God, God who walks among you, you, you get in with me and you're going to experience the abundant life that you were created to live in the first place. Praise God. Hallelujah. The teaching in Ephesians and James go all the way back to the garden. Our Father in His Word has taught us that what happened, how He fixed, how He fixed it, and how we are to be empowered by it. How to not allow the foulness of the words of Satan, the words of this world, the words of your flesh, the words of death hell in the grave, the words that, that come against God, not to allow those words to affect our lives any longer. He has brought us back to himself in all of his power, splendor, and glory. Hallelujah. The first man rebelled against God, specifically against the word of God, bringing destruction and death to all mankind. So to fix this, God had to counteract what took place. First Adam, he brought the second Adam, amen? Praise God. God himself incarnate in his own son. The word of God made flesh. It had to be the word of God too because when we say Jesus, I'll make you the Lord of my life. Well, God made the word Flesh made the word Jesus, Yeshua, that which means Jehovah saves, Jehovah is our salvation, Jehovah has saved you, praise God. When we, when, 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 when we say that, we're also pledging our covenant promise, our covenant with the word of God. Jesus is, Yeshua is the word of God. So when we say Jesus, you are my king, you are my Lord. You're saying, word of God, you are the Lord of my life. In other words, I will follow no one else's word ever again. Praise God. That's revelation, folks. This is good teaching, amen? Praise God. God himself incarnate in his own son, the word of God made flesh. As a good father would, God came himself to fix what his child had broken. Amen. Adam broke it and God came and fixed it. Praise God. First man broke covenant with God. The second man, Jesus, Yeshua, son of God, word of God. God who walks among us came and gave to us out of his deep love for you and I, his everlasting shed blood covenant that washes us clean on the mercy seat of heaven. Praise God. Every sin washed away. Every sin washed away. Praise God. Past, present, and future. That's why we have the ability to come to the throne room of grace and say, Father, I saw that I'm convicted by this. And, and Father, I, I, I just I, I ask you to forgive me as I, as I turn away from that and follow you. And he says, I, I am faithful and just to forgive you. And then when he forgives, what, what does he do when he forgives? He, he, he takes it. He throws it in that sea of forgetfulness. You come back to him with that same thing, he's going to say, what? You go, oh, Father, I'm just, you know that thing, I, 
I just feel real bad. Now that's guilt and condemnation coming upon you after you've already received your forgiveness. And that's the work of the devil to keep you under that guilt and condemnation. Well, there is no guilt and condemnation in Christ Jesus. When you go and ask for forgiveness, receive your forgiveness because he has given it. He's forgotten about it. He says, what are you talking about? I got no record of this. Don't let the devil beat you up with something that God has already fixed, that God has already forgiven, and that what God has already forgotten about. Just keep wa walking clean, keep walking down the road of righteousness, keep walking away from what, what, whatever it was. Praise God. That's how simple the Word of God is. That's how simple the Kingdom of God is. Praise God. Praise God. You are washed. You're, the blood of Jesus is on the mercy seat of heaven. No more rebellion. But children of obedience to every word of the living God. That's who we are. We are the children of obedience. We, we, we obey, we learn, and, 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 and you know, every line and every precept. Amen? So what we do is we, we learn the line upon line so we can learn the precepts or the concepts of what those lines are telling us. And, and, and he gives us his concepts of kingdom concepts. This is the concepts that you've got to have in your heart, in your mind, in your thinking, in, in your soul to live the life that, that, that he created us to live. He's saying, he's saying, have it, read this. I'm giving you the, the line upon line. Get to know it so it becomes real inside of you so you start to have the conceptual view, the precept of it, the conceptual view of how, what it is, how it is, and how to apply it to your life. Amen? And, and, and I've said this for years, that the concepts that you have become the reality that you live. And what God's saying, if you'll, if you'll read the line upon line and apply the line upon line, you're going to have the, my concepts of life, my concepts of victory, my my concepts of kingdom, my concepts of overflowing life, and you're going to experience them because now this becomes the reality of your life. Amen? Praise God. Father's words to us are love, compassion, joy, protection, peace, wholeness, blessing, and oneness with Him. In the shed blood of the cross, praise God. His word for us is his expression of the goodness of his love to us. Praise God. Let's learn from our Lord in John 3, 12 through 21. John 3, 12 through 21. This is Jesus teaching, Jesus speaking, amen. And so let's learn from the master himself. Glory to God. Verse 12, 3, ver John 3, verse 12. If I told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? Now, now he's saying, hey, I know heavenly things. I can tell you heavenly things. Praise God. Glory to God. And they recognize that. John 3, 13. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory to God. For God sent not his Son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes in him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already. That through the rebellion of Adam, through the rebellion of Adam and the condition of mankind, mankind is already condemned to death, hell, and the grave. But Jesus came and said, believe on me and you'll be saved. You're not going to be under that condemnation anymore. You're not going to be condemned to this, to this eternal future of pain and torment and, and weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
But he that believes not is, is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Believe in the name of Yeshua. Believe in the name of Jesus and you will be saved. John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved, rebuked, convicted, admonished, convinced otherwise. Man, that, I mean, he says come to the light, and, and you get into the light, you're going to be convinced otherwise. You're going to be convinced that that darkness, that that evil, that that thing that you thought you enjoyed, yeah, when you're standing in the light, you're going to see how dark it is. Come to the light and put away the darkness because let him convict you. Let him show you. Let him convince you otherwise. Amen? Praise God. In other words, you come to the light and the light's going to tell you you're wrong. Stop doing that. But people love the darkness of their sin more than they love the truth of the light of the word, the Son of God. We need to allow people to understand, to, to say, hey, come to the light. See the light. Yeah, just step away from the darkness long enough to be convinced. Step away from the darkness and come into Jesus Christ. Amen. Come into Jesus Christ. Praise God. And then you'll start to see the difference between walking the life of light and walking in the darkness of the ever-present evil world. John 3, 21. But he that doeth truth. See, we do it truth. We live it truth. We, we do it the life, the, con the concepts of, uh, of kingdom, of God, of love, of peace, of joy, of kindness, of goodness, of long suffering, which is patience. And, and we have the self control. Not that it's of ourselves, it's that grace that's given us. So, so by our Spirit and the Holy Spirit, we can control those things that we do in our lives so as not to, to wander back and to walk back back into the deceptions of darkness praise God but he that doeth truth comes to the light that his deeds may be manifest that they are engaged in and ministered about in God you know the deeds the deeds he's talking about the deeds of, of God we, we, they're manifest in God we, that, uh, when we when we walk in the truth of the light and we're pressing out a life of light that the deeds and the, and the works and the life that we live are manifest by engaging and ministering the will of God in our lives and bringing the will of God, which is none should perish to others. Praise God. Amen and amen. That's a good word. Receive that today. This is living the love life. The word and spirit of truth. Life. The spirit and the word of truth, which is life. The oneness with God life the justified at the cross life the sanctified at the cross life this is what we're living the light of truth in the cross life the righteousness of god in christ in the shed blood covenant of the cross life this is the life that we're living the child of god in the cross life the joint heir with Jesus in the cross, life. Living in the authority of Messiah in the cross, life. This is the abundant life that we're living. The overcoming in the shed blood of Jesus on the cross, life. Praise God. <clears throat> Experiencing the blessing of God in the shed blood of the cross, life. This is our life in God. The being healed by the shed blood covenant of the cross life. The being completely whole in his wholeness. The life of God in the cross 
life. This is the life that the believer lives. This is what happened at the cross of Christ. Amen. This is what we celebrate every year and every day of every year is the cross of Christ, the shed blood covenant sacrifice that he gave his life for you and I by receiving the shed blood sacrifice of the cross and calling upon the name that is above every name that is named make Yeshua the Lord of your life you live victorious in every area of life this is what happens when you make the Lord your Lord when you make Yeshua and you call upon the name of Yeshua Jesus Christ the Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach the, the, the anointed king who sits on David's throne when you make him your life he gives you victorious life in him praise God Praise God. When you step out of darkness and into the light of Jesus and his shed blood sacrifice on the cross, you live in victory over death, victory over hell. Praise God. No grave's going to hold you down. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 says, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death. Where is your sting? Death has no more victory over you and I, those who believe in Jesus Christ. They, death has no more, more sting. We don't, we don't fear death because we don't have death. Our bodies might lie down, but we step out of those bodies and we're in the presence of the Lord, the Word says. And praise God, we are eternal with Him. And then at one point, He comes back. Praise God, and the dead shall rise in Christ. Hallelujah. And everybody's body is changed to that eternal body, just like Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is our life as believers. We believe this stuff because it is truth and it is light. Amen. Praise God. Death has no more sting for, for those who call upon the name and choose to make themselves a part of God and his kingdom. How? The Apostle Paul writes this and tells us how. Romans 10, 9, 10, and 13. Romans 10, 9, 10, and 13. Verse 9, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and we're talking about that tomorrow, you shall be saved. You shall, not maybe be saved, but you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Glory to God. For those of you that are saved already, call upon the name of the Lord in every storm that arises. Use the authority of, the, of his name given to you in his shed blood covenant with you. And you will be saved. You will be delivered. You will be rescued. You will be made whole in his peace. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Call upon the name of Jesus. Use the name that is above every name. For he has given you the authority in this earth to use his name Praise God with all his authority. Praise God. And then he, he backs it up with the power of his blood covenant. His shed blood covenant cleanses you in the mercy seat of God. And when he proves this power in heaven, he comes up in the resurrection and gives you the resurrected power that is powered by the blood in heaven to give you the power of the Holy Spirit here on this earth. And we have the power of heaven, the power of Jesus Christ, the power of Father God's grace results in our life. Amen. Praise God, receive it today. Use the power and authority given to you by your heavenly Father, by hope, by love, and the hope, hope in the faith, faith into grace, grace into glory. Jesus Christ is all in all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive that today in Jesus' name. Now, if you, now, if you, any of you and you buy buy this this message on YouTube. 
wherever we might be able to get this message onto other avenues. If you haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, and you see the light of this message, and you see the light of the cross, and you see, and you, and you see, and you want to be separated from the darkness and live unto eternal life with Jesus in love, peace, joy. Amen. Which is his kingdom. Pray this prayer. The prayer that Paul said. What did he say? That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let's call upon the name of the Lord and receive your salvation. Just say, Father God. I repent. I turn away from the world and I turn to you. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I confess it with my mouth that Jesus, you are my Lord, my Savior, and my King. And I believe it in my heart. Amen. That there's nobody going to take that away. That I believe this, that I believe it, that I believe it. Praise God and I believe that you are alive today. That you raised from the dead and you ascended unto God. And you are alive today and you are coming back. Because at the end of the book, it says, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming. If you prayed that prayer, you are saved. If you dedicated your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, seeking the Father in Him, you are saved. Amen. You need to find out what that means by coming to this church finding yourself a good church, if you are not in this area, then, 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 then write me and I will help you find a church in your area. Praise God. And, and praise God. Right now, just say, Jesus, I ask you right now to baptize me with the indwelling power of your Holy Spirit, with every gift and with every fruit. Amen. You might not know what all those are, but you're going to learn it because the Holy Spirit is the teacher of all things. And as you get into the word of God, the word of truth, the spirit of truth is going to bring you light upon the things that you learn. Praise God. He will give you a prayer language. A prayer language is, is, is an unknown language. It's a holy language. It's a God language that, 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 that you will purposely use to pray. You pray with your understanding and you pray in, in your prayer language. And when you're praying in your prayer language, the word says that you're praying out the mysteries of your life. That God is literally, the Holy Spirit is literally praying for you. Praise God. Amen. How much more simple can we get it when we don't know how to pray that God himself is going to pray for us as we let him speak through our mouth. You need to know how to write me. And if this message was a blessing to you, we do need support here at Dominion of Love Home Fellowship, Stephen Detweiler Ministries. Um, uh, I need your help. We've got a lot of things to do. Um, we're pressing in this year. Um, we believe this is the year that we start gaining your support. Uh, we start gaining support uh, from around around us and we start gaining the people we're going to start reaching out to the truck stops we got two truck stops right down the street we're going to start setting up the volunteers so on the weekends we can we can put out we can put out uh, our flyers and and have our number out there so they can call and get picked up for church amen because those guys are out on the road man there are some of them are out on the road weeks at a time they're doing 600 miles a day 11 hours a day and they need to be able to take a break and get to church help us do this if this ministry has been a blessing to you hook up with us a one-time offering uh, your tithe if this is this this becomes your church via youtube um uh, your love gifts either way make your checks payable to to, to rsf Dominion of Love International, Inc. Mail them to 13625 U.S. Highway 287, Fort Worth, Texas 76179. If you have questions, use that address. Give me your email. I'll be happy to get back to you. If you need prayer, we will get scripture. We will get the covenant promises. And we will come into agreement together. Write me. I love you. God loves you. 
and we'll see you next week. Amen.